Hi everyone, it's Benitez here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to share with you all how you can avoid the apply to each from appearing when you don't want it to appear. For the agenda today, I'm going to briefly talk about the background before we jump straight into the demo in Power Automate. For the background, I am going to refer to two previous WTF episodes. So this one that you're seeing on screen is probably the most common one that I run into where I experience the apply to each and occurring when I don't want it to appear. So this was one of my earlier WTF episodes. If we take a closer look, we can see that we are using a convert time zone action and I'm referencing a property where as a result, the apply to each action has appeared and has cocooned my convert time zone action. So I will briefly talk about this next. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the demo. Okay, so we're going to head straight into my flow in Power Automate. And the reason why the apply to each is appearing is because this property that I'm referencing lives within this CDS list records action. And as you can see, I've applied a filtered query where it will only ever retrieve me a single time zone definition record or row in an array. And so when we look at the response, this is what it looks like. We can see that it's an array because the clue here is with the square brackets. But as I mentioned, we are only ever going to retrieve one time zone definition record or row in the array based on a time zone code value of the user. So for me to reference the standard name property value without having the apply to each from appearing, we can use an expression. So I'm going to jump to my PowerPoint slides to help explain this expression that I'm using in this compose action which is then referenced in here. And as you can see, that apply to each doesn't appear. Okay, so back to my PowerPoint slide. When we are referencing a property in a CDS list records action, and we know that only one record is expected to be returned, we need to specify that in the expression when we use it downstream in Power Automate. So the first step is to grab the value. So this is what I mean by value. This is the array. And then we want to wrap a first function around the array. And this is because we are specifying that we only ever want the first row in that array to be retrieved. And then the final part of the expression is to actually reference the property. So we're saying not only do we want the first row in the array, but I specifically want this property value only. And the question mark is a bonus tip where if you do not include this question mark and if for whatever reason the standard name value is null, it's not going to cause your power automate to crash. So this is an expression that I learned from my good friend John Liu, aka the Flow Ninja. He is another Microsoft MVP in our community. He is also the creator behind Flow Studio and Clarity. So go ahead and check that out. And big thank you to John for teaching me how to do this so that I can avoid apply to each from appearing. Oh, by the way, he has also written a blog post on this as well. So you might as well check it out. Um, yeah, so this is one expression that you can use. So if I go back to my power automate with flow and we run this flow, we'll see that it will successfully run and the apply to each didn't appear. And that is because we have specified in our expression that we only ever want to reference the standard name property from the first row in that array because of how we query to only retrieve one time zone uh, definition for that user. Another method that you can use is this expression in here. 
So it's kind of similar, but rather than using the first function, you are specifying the row by using the uh, integer value of zero wrapped around square brackets. Okay, so the second option that I'm going to go through with you today is based on a different scenario. So with this scenario, I'm referencing a property from an HTTP action. So this is a pair automate where I'm retrieving the local time of contact using a Bing Maps API request. And within that Bing Maps API uh, response, I am only wanting to grab the Windows time zone ID property. Now, before we talk about the expression that you should be using, I want to show you how that apply to each would be appearing if I didn't use that expression. So the first thing that we're going to do is use a parse JSON action. And this is so that we can reference the properties downstream in the flow. I'm going to go ahead and copy this response in order to generate the schema. Cool, perfect. So then the next step is if I were to use a compose action to retrieve that Windows time zone ID, we are actually going to jump through a number of arrays. So the property that I'm going to select in here is resources. So we'll see an apply to each appear. And then the next property that I'm going to select is the time zone at location property. And then we'll see another apply to each appear. Okay, so then I'm once again going to select another compose action. And this time the property that I'm going to select is the time zone property. And once again, we see that apply to each from appearing. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, right? So you can kind of see why people get confused on understanding why this apply to each appears, but I promise you, I will explain it to you very shortly. So then the very last property that we want is the Windows time zone ID, and then another apply to each appears. So, well, would you look at that? That's quite a few apply to each uh, actions appearing and cocooning the compose actions. So we had to go through all of that just to get to the Windows time zone ID property. Okay, so if we take a closer look at this, right, this is a property that we want to reference, but it's actually buried within arrays. So I will head back to my PowerPoint slide so that I can explain this to you. Okay, so the way I like to explain this expression is to work backwards. So we know that we want to retrieve the body from the HTTP response. However, we only want the Windows time zone ID. That's the only property that we want to reference in my flow in Power Automate. But in order to get the Windows time zone ID, we actually have to grab it from the time zone array. And we know that from looking at the response, there's only ever going to be one row uh, in the array that we need, which is what the zero represents. But this lives within the time zone at location array. And again, because we know that there's only ever going to be one row returned, again, we need the zero. And likewise for resources and resource sets. So essentially, we're working backwards where we're referencing the property as well as the array it lives in. And we know that for each array, only ever one row is going to be returned, which is what this zero represents. And so that's the expression to use. So if I head back into my Power Automate with Flow and we delete this overarching apply to each action, get rid of that parse JSON action. And if we stick with this expression that I've just shown you and run that flow, we'll see that it will successfully run. So the difference between the two options is that the latter, which I've just explained, so if I go back, sorry, to my PowerPoint slide, is suitable in the scenario where you are referencing a property 
that is buried within arrays. Whereas the first option that I that I took you through is good to use when you are referencing a property that isn't buried in an array. So as you can see, it's something that you can reference um, straight away as long as you wrap a first function around um, the value. Yeah, so I hope this makes sense. This took me a lot of attempts to film because it is quite a, uh, well, in my opinion, a challenging subject to talk about. So I hope, I hope it made sense. I have a blog post as well that goes into the written detail of it because this was very hard to explain verbally, but I hope you appreciated it. And if you did, give me a thumbs up and please continue to subscribe and watch my WTF episodes. I do have more content coming up this year. So once again, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye. Turn up. Let's go. Let's go.